before you. Congressman Cleaver, thank you very much. We're honored to have Representative Todd Rokita here. Uh, he's serving his first term representing Indiana's 4th Congressional District. Uh, like Senator Brown before him, prior to his service in Congress, Congressman Rokita served two terms as the Indiana Secretary of State. During his tenure, he was president of the National Association of Secretaries of State. Congressman Rokita, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Um, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased to know that as I visit here from the other side of the rotunda, uh, you all don't take um, uh, as much adherence to the time clock as we do on our side. <laughs> In light of that, I won't be more than 40 minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Indiana's voter ID law in the spring of 2005, Indiana's law requires that to vote in person, a voter must present a valid photo ID issued by Indiana or the United States. That ID must have a photo of the voter and the expiration date. I imagine as I listen to Representative Gonzalez's testimony that to the extent one of those photo IDs uh, examples that he mentioned didn't comply with the Texas law was because it didn't have an expiration date. And there's a very logical reason why we have an expiration date on these uh, in our law, and that was because people's facial uh, images change. I mean, they, they, they get older, for example. Now, it wasn't that our law was so, <laughs> so strict. Unless you're a senator or congressman. <laughs> the same photo will last for decades. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've forgotten where I am. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, it's not that we were so strict in Indiana as to say, well, the, the photo IDs had an expiration date of yesterday and today's election day, therefore you can't vote. I mean, that's an example that I would agree with these gentlemen on. That would be unreasonable. Our face doesn't change that much in a day. So as an example of, of our, the reasonableness in Indiana's law, we simply said, all right, you can vote on an expired ID up to two years. You know, so we, we did things like that all along the way to accommodate the arguments that I'm again uh, hearing today, uh, but certainly we haven't heard for the first time. And the bottom line is Indiana's, after six years, six years worth of elections, Indiana's photo ID law works. In fact, people um, that, that agree with the comments that I've heard already have been looking. They, they have looked, I think they've given up looking finally for, for problems with Indiana's photo ID law. We have not been sued once we haven't even had allegations, at, uh, legitimate allegations, that anyone, Hispanic, black, woman, man, young, old, whoever, has been legitimately or illegitimately disenfranchised by Indiana's law because it's reasonable. It's reasonable also because whether or not you agree that in-person voter fraud exists, and I will say that as eight years being Indiana Secretary of State, it does exist. We have allegations made every election. That doesn't mean I'm trying to denigrate Hoosiers. We are some of the, uh, I think, most reasonable, common sense, God-loving, patriotic people that, that, that this nation knows. But if it's happening in Indiana, it's happening everywhere, from New York to California. Now, these gentlemen and others say, well, you can't produce one case. You can't produce one conviction. Therefore, it doesn't exist. The word evidence was used. Well, that's not true. There's a lot of evidence. And a lot, there are several cases that I've presented to prosecutors who haven't taken up the case. Not because of a lack of evidence, but because think about the kind of fraud it is. Think about the kind of crime it is. It's something that happens in an instant. And then it's gone. The witnesses dissipate. These are volunteer poll workers. It's not a domestic violence case. It's not something that leaves visible scars or, 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 or blemishes or, or, or bruises. And so it's a kind of a case, it's a kind of fraud that's very hard to prosecute. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And the bottom line, it's not a matter of how many cases or convictions there are, gentlemen. It's a matter of confidence. In a free republic, you have got to have the personal responsibility to participate. Voting is one of the highest and best civic transactions we can undertake. I've heard today that people leave their, have to leave their jobs to come and vote. Why make it harder? Well, I would take the opposite end of that. People leave their jobs. They leave their work. Sometimes they leave their kids to go vote. Hopefully, they take their kids with them. Hopefully they wait in a short line as they do in Indiana. We haven't seen extended long lines in Indiana after six years at all. It hasn't elongated the voting process. 
but you leave your day-to-day -day live to come vote. And then you get to the poll, you get to the poll clerk, you sign in, maybe, and you realize that the perception is that the people that are doing this process don't take it nearly as seriously as some of the other transactions that they partake in in day-to-day -day life. And so I would argue it leaves the perception of a lack of confidence. These people didn't even care enough to find out who I was. Yet they asked me to leave my life and go vote. We want to instill confidence in the process to drive up turnout. And in fact, in Indiana, since we've had the photo ID law, voting turnout has gone up 2%. It wasn't enacted to increase voter turnout. It wasn't enacted to decrease voter turnout. But the effect was it has increased voter turnout. If you do it the right way, if you do it reasonably, uh, you will instill confidence in our process, which is definitely needed, definitely a prerequisite uh, to having a successful free republic and to allow this citizenry uh, to participate and to grow the personal responsibility that is needed if we are going to maintain a free republic. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you for letting me come uh, this afternoon, and I'd like to enter my remarks for the record. Thank you, Congressman Rakita, and, and of course your remarks in their entirety will be part of the record, and the remaining 35 minutes that you were going to take will be, be published instead of transcribed. I don't know if there are any questions of our guests from the House. If not, we're going to go to the second panel. We thank you very much for coming. I know Senator Graham has to go to another meeting, but thank you for joining us this morning, or this afternoon. We're going to turn to our second panel of witnesses, and I'll ask the witnesses to take the